Hey, all right. There's people. I can't believe it. I'm, oh, I'm, this is so sweet. I'm thrilled. Um, when I gave this talk at Fanime, I had a grand total of one attendee because I was scheduled up, uh, opposite two uber popular events, so I was a very sad person. Well, look at that smiling face. <laughs> so, um, good morning. Thank you so much for um, sticking through to the bitter end uh, and for coming at such an ungodly hour. Um, my name is Donald Burr. Uh, my co-host here is Michelle Klein yeah, Haas, Michelle and we Klein-Hass. are um, we host a Talk Uno podcast, a podcast dedicated to news, reviews, and commentary on all things anime. Uh, and today, I'm gonna we're going to talk to you about how to start your own podcast, which is oops, that's my alarm. <laughs> What did it say? Uh, Something like that. So, um, before we go any further, write this URL down. I'm going to be covering a lot of information, um, and I'll be mentioning a lot of products, uh, software, services, and um, to save your wrists from um, the writing cramps that may ensue, I put all that information up on this lovely website, otakundopodcast.com slash podcasting. Um, I'll have my slides from this talk there as well once I'm done with it. So everything you need is right, will be right there, and you don't need to uh, uh, bother with taking notes. Just listen to the sound of our voice. I'm notoriously bad at taking notes, so it's like... Uh don't want to expect you guys to have to. Exactly. So, I um, this is only my second time giving a talk, and I, I, I'm starting to get a little less nervous, but then I saw this cartoon from Anime News Network. <laughs> um, I will do my best to not have things explode on you, but just in case, please take this moment to locate your emergency exits. So, what is a podcast? Um, According to Wikipedia, a podcast is a series of digital media files, either audio or video, that are released episodically and downloaded through web syndication. A bit dry, technically accurate, but a friend of mine came up with a definition that I thought is much easier to to comprehend, TiVo for radio. So, like a TiVo, um, you can basically capture uh, podcasts at your leisure and listen to them at your leisure wherever you are, um, you know, on the bus, at work, uh, on the train, going home, wherever. Or on a boat. Exactly, yes. So um, I have this cool little video here that talks a little bit more about it. So let's watch the video. So that's, I think, is a pretty good summary of, of what podcasting is. You may still be thinking, okay, this has got to be hard to do, got to be very expensive. Um, and yes, it can be. Take, for example, Leo Laporte, uh, one of the Internet's most prolific podcasters. His, his office there looks like, I don't know, mission control. Um, no, you don't have to go that complex. You can if you want to, but you don't, you know, if you're just getting started, Odds are, if you play, uh, if you play a gamer, you have all the, you have everything that you need already. So why are we here? We're here quite simply because we need you. Um, we, meaning both the podcast podcaster community audience and the audience, um, there are a lot of great anime podcasts out there. Um, a lot of them are, you know. A lot of the uh, the uh, commercial entities, Bang Zoom and uh, Funimation, and um, uh, let's see, yeah, Bang Zoom has got Anime TV. A lot of great uh, commercial podcasts out there, but you know, we for the community to thrive, we really need more independent voices out there, and um, not just on you know anime in general, but. You know, because podcasting is so easy to do, you can really specialize in what you cover. So, like, you know, maybe you want to, uh, you're really passionate about Hetalia. You know, a, a podcast all about Hetalia would be awesome. Um, podcasting is a great way to get your voice across, to get your message heard, and it's really easy to do. 
I, we're going with the keep it simple approach. Um, like I said before, you can go, you can totally go overboard in terms of gear, um, software, and stuff, um, serv hosting services. But for 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 the purposes of today's talk, I'm going to be basically uh, going over what you need, you know, the minimum that you need. Uh, uh, just to get started, because that way you don't have to, you know, spend a whole lot of money at first. You can get started. This setup will last you quite a while, and you can go for, grow from there. And uh, side tip there here: if you've got a podcast setup, you've also got pretty much all you need to do uh, vo uh, fan dubs, fan dubs, experimenting in, in um, voice acting. You can cut your own demo tape. There you go. So if your podcasting career doesn't work out, you can try out as being a voice actor, voice actress. Um, there's going to be a talk in this very room later today um, for, with, with uh, much more information, more in-depth, advanced stuff. So if you want to hang around for that, um, I understand the material is going to be very good. I'll prob I'm planning on being there. So check it out. Um, that's... Uh, Habits of, of Successful Anime Blogging and Podcasting, and that's uh, at 11 o'clock in this very room, so you don't even have to move. So what do you need? Well, you'll need a computer of some sort. Any computer, Mac or PC, made within the past five years or so has more than enough power to handle your basic audio podcast. This, this MacBook is almost four years old. However, it is a champ at doing this sort of stuff. Absolutely. Um, desktop or laptop, any, anyone will do. Um, if you plan on covering conventions, though, you might want to seriously consider a laptop because that way you can take your studio with you and put out episodes in your hotel room at night, bandwidth permitting. And again, PC or Mac, uh, we're totally platform agnostic. You know, whatever you've got will work. Um, I'm going to show some soft. I'm going to show software for both PC and or Windows and Mac, so uh, you know you don't have to feel left out. <coughs> Mac's <book. coughs> You'll also need a microphone. Um, it used to be that uh, you know you you need all sorts of weird cables and adapters to hook up microphones to your computer, and those microphones that used to be made specifically for computers were pretty terrible. Not anymore. You can get some awesome, high-quality microphones that literally plug straight into your computer's USB port. Um, the one on the left here that kind of looks like the Death Star—that's the Blue Snowball. It's very popular with podcasters. It's a very good mic. You can get it for less than a hundred dollars. Um, mics. There's mics in all different shapes and sizes. This is my mic of choice. It's the uh, uh, Samson G Track. Um, it's really. It's built like a tank. I'm um, rocking a uh, M Audio Pod uh, M, M Audio Producer USB. Uh, this is for less than a hundred dollars. It includes a very cut down version of uh, Pro Tools, even. So. Uh, you know, you can get this at like uh, Best Buy or something like that, and you will have a very limited. But it, it's Pro Tools. This is the this is the program that professionals use for audio. And like I said before, if you're a gamer, you probably have everything you need already uh, in that, uh, in, uh, namely a gaming headset such as this Logitech here. Um, gaming headsets make awesome. Uh, intro podcasting setups. A lot of the famous, the professional podcasters got their start using headsets just like this. And these are like super affordable, 20 to $30 typically. You'll also need a good set of headphones. Um, you, want, you really need to use headphones when you're editing because uh, you don't want to have the computer speaker going uh, because it'll interfere with your recording. It'll be nasty. You'll have feedback. It'll be really bad. Um, any decent set of headphones will do. I happen to like the uh, Sony V6s, which are pictured here. And Michelle, you have, uh, uh, what have you got? These are acoustic research. You can use you can use the um, earbuds that came with your MP3 player, but I mean in a pinch. But really, get a good set of headphones. Your, your ears your ears will thank you. Now I said before that having a laptop would be great for covering conventions. What's even better is one of these guys, uh, otherwise known as uh, 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 field recorders or portable audio recorders. I've got one right here. This is the Zoom H4n. Basically, it's a device that has 
everything like a your own recording studio build it right in you've got some pretty really good high quality microphones and uh, recording circuitry and it records to little SD memory cards so you take this thing with you into the you know into the dealer's room you, you want to interview somebody in a dealer's room or say after a panel you don't want to be lugging your laptop around and you have to set it up and stuff just whip out your little digital recorder and you're off to the races no um, the moving one parts. no moving parts the one on the left is the Zoom H2, which is this guy's little little brother. Um, that one can be had for about just over $100. Um, this one here is about $300. Now, if you're a, if you're a student um, or if you work in an office, you may have seen one of these guys. Um, these are typically the kind you, that students use to record lectures or that you know executives use to take di dictation to their um, sec secretaries. Um, Got to be careful with these because. A lot of, in the past, and even still today, a lot of them record in really weird, non-standard formats. Um, so you want to uh, look at the box, make sure it supports a standard format like Microsoft Wave or MP3. This one from Sony actually supports MP3, so it, it, it's pretty good. Now the mics on these guys are generally not as good as the mics on these guys, but it'll do in a pinch, and well, this is a lot more easy to carry than that. If you've got a smartphone, you may already have an excellent uh, recording uh, platform already. Um, a lot of the smartphones these days have excellent, you know, pretty decent recording circuitry. The iPhone has a really good microphone. I know of quite a few podcasters who literally do their shows right on their uh, iPhones. Um, and if, if all you want to do is put out little, you know, five minute or less episodes, then literally all you need is a smartphone and a program called Audioboo. Um, it has everything you need built in. You don't need any web hosting. You can just get up and leave right now. But stick around, please. So let's talk software. Um, we're both Mac people, and uh, the Mac comes with an excellent uh, recording program built in, GarageBand. It's really good. A lot of, uh, a lot of the pros use it, believe it or not. Um, if you're more on the Windows side. Actually, this next program, Audacity, will work on both Mac and Windows, so it's cross-platform. That's the one I'll be showing today because it basically looks the same whether you're on a Mac or Windows. And it's a little free. and it's free, yes, and open source. Yeah, the interface is a, is not as polished as say, your typical Apple product, but it it's pretty solid. It works very well. This program, this next program here, is called the Levelator, and what it does is, well, quite simply, magic. It literally goes through your audio file and equalizes all the different volume levels. So you get this a lot if, say, you're, you're, you're with a co-host. Maybe your microphone level is, is a little hotter than your co-host's. Um, or even if it's just you, you know, sometimes you're maybe talking a little bit far, farther, farther back from a microphone. Sometimes you're talking really up close to it, and you have different volume levels. What the levelator does is it goes through and sort of smooths everything out, makes everything sound really good. And it's for both Mac and Windows, and it's free as well. iTunes. Um, iTunes is useful because it both encodes your podcast into the standard format, MP3, and you can also use it as a podcatcher, you know, uh, to listen to podcasts. And it's always a good idea to subscribe to your own podcast feed. That way you can test to make sure everything works and sort of head problems off at the pass before you get angry emails from your users. Finally, there's two little utilities that help with the MP3 encoding. Um, the one on the Mac, the one on the left is a Mac, Mac program. It's an Apple script called um, Drop a Few My Way. And the one on the right is for Windows. It's called Lame Drop. Basically, what it, it does is it, you give it your raw, unfinished audio file, and it'll spit out a, a completely encoded MP3. Optional but useful Skype. Um, Skype is the podcaster's tool of choice for conducting remote interviews. I mean, literally, the pros use Skype. They all use Skype. Um, fantastic audio quality, um, and in most cases, uh, it's completely free. Uh, now, you need a program to record your Skype calls. For the Mac, um, there's a program called um, Skype Call Recorder. It's from Ecamm Networks. Um, it, 
Unfortunately, it's not free, but it's very cheap. It's only $20 and well worth every penny. On the PC side, I found a great program called MP3 Skype Call Recorder, which is actually free. So there you go. And finally, you may, you may not need this last program, but, if, but in the you know, one, one, one in a million time, you might figure out that, hey, it might be good to have. It's called um, Sound Soap. And this is useful for cleaning, cleaning up really, really bad audio. Um, nine, time, you know, nine times out of 10, um, when I'm recording a Skype call, it, the quality is great. But every once in a while, I get a really, uh, really lousy quality. And that's usually when I'm calling out to someone's cell phone through Skype, um, because then you're brid bridging out to the public telephone network, which is really bad sometimes. You get really scratchy audio and other things. Um, sound soap is useful for cleaning, through cleaning your audio. It's not perfect, but it'll take something that's totally unlistenable and turn it into something that's bearable. So again, it's, it's prob you probably won't need it, but it's good to know about in case you do, and it's about $100 um, and available for both uh, Mac and PC. Web hosting. You'll need a place to host your podcast audio files and um, your website. It used to be in the bad old days, you'd need um, all sorts of weird specialized web hosts and it would cost you an arm and a leg. Not anymore. There's a lot of excellent uh, one-stop shopping services specifically designed for podcasters. They do all the hard work of creating a podcast feed. You just basically shove it you know, shove in an mp3 file and they do all the work one of the really good ones i found is called podbean um you get some pretty good um uh, capabilities uh, more than enough you know if you're just getting started completely free and if you want to you know add more capacity um, add more bandwidth uh, add more customizability they have really uh, reasonably priced uh, monthly plans or or yearly plans as well so it, it grows when you, when you want to. So enough talk, let's do it. I like to break things up into four phases. Your planning phase, the re recording phase, editing phase, and finally the pub encoding and publishing phase. Um, planning phase, that's where you figure out what the heck you want to say, which is very important. Um, several ways of doing it. You can do the completely off-the-cuff, unscripted route, um, but I find that it makes me sound like a scatterbrained idiot. Um, you know, some people, some people do do well with this, um, but some people don't, like myself. Um, if you're interviewing someone, they really hate this because, you know, they like to at least know roughly what you want to talk about, and and, and to have you come out from left field and say something, you know, completely whatever. It, they don't like that at all. And unscripted kind of looks like that. <laughs> Nothing. You can, now you can go the completely opposite route and have everything scripted to the letter, which means you know, you, you know what you're going to talk about. But unless you're a really good actor, I find that it makes me sound kind of flat and robotic. Um, now, interviewers, interviewees love this because then they can provide, you, they can provide, uh, prepare pre, you know, canned answers to your questions. But, you know, those tend to sound flat and unemotional as well. So here's an example of that. This is my friend Alison Sheridan's podcast. She literally writes out every word she says, um, but she somehow still meant, makes, makes it sound, uh, you know, alive. So, again, if you're a really good actor or actress, you can pull this off. But me, I sound like, you know, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, you know. <laughs> I tend to compromise. Um, I kind of tend to outline what I'm going to say, um, you know, kind of broad strokes. And if I want to get a specific piece of phrasing, like say I'm pulling out someone's quote, then I'll just put that quote in. Otherwise, I just kind of, you know, roughly outline what I'm going to talk about. And this is a great compromise for interviewees because you can send them a list of talking points. They kind of know what, roughly what you're going to talk about, but you still have the, free, the latitude to you know, improvise and kind of take things off in a different direction if they say something that interests you. And here's an example. This is from uh, one of my episodes where, um, 
basically I'm just, I, like I said, just literally outline things. Um, here's another example. Now here you'll see I actually pulled out a quotation at the bottom there. So if you want to quote someone word, word for word, I can do that. Here's another example. You, you get the idea. So let's record stuff. Good audio is key. Um, I have listened to so many podcasts where the audio is just terrible. Um, you hear someone's lawnmower in the background. You hear kids playing. You hear their dog barking. Please, do not skimp on your audio. Um, but fortunately, it's really easy to get good audio, and it's not that expensive. First thing to consider is acoustics, the sound of the room. Um, a recording, typical recording studios, it's the innermost room in a building. That way you're isolated as much as possible from outside noise. In fact, usually um, you have uh, sound booths. Um, this is actually how anime dubs are done. You'll see uh, the different voice actors, voice actresses in their own little booths reading from their scripts, a uh, little, a small enclosed space, um, you know, innermost uh, room, uh, room in the building. Now you could do, you know, if you have over $9,000, you can build your own studio, but you know, you don't have to. Just use um, the innermost room in your house. If you have a walk-in closet, those are excellent podcast studios. I know quite a few podcasters who've converted their walk-in closets into home studios. But if you don't have such a thing, just use the innermost room. Don't use the room right next to the you know, busy street or right next to the playground or right next to the swing, swing pool if you're in an apartment complex. And do your best. Of course, um, you know, small enclosed spaces. If you're a Helsing cosplayer, you have a distinct advantage here because you can podcast in your coffin. Yeah. And yes, that is our friend Danny and Amy's coffin, who they, which they stored in our hotel room a couple of years ago here at AX, and it was a little strange. Uh, more acoustics. Uh, you want to minimize r hard surfaces for sound to reflect on. This room is probably the, one of the worst examples of that. Here, listen to this. Hear all that, all that nasty echo and reverb off the walls and ceiling. Now, um, in a recording studio, you'll typically see this funky gray foam on the, covering every surface. It's called Aurelex. Um, it costs money, of course, and also it's not very, probably not very high on the spousal acceptance factor. So what do you do? Hang curtains. Curtains, bed sheets, um, bath towels, any soft absorbent surface, you know, just hang it on uh, as much as many uh, walls as you can. And you don't, you don't even have to do this permanently. I know quite a few people who use thumbtacks and put up bed sheets you know, while they're recording, then they can take them, take them down afterwards. But you basically want to cover up as many of the hard uh, re uh, audio reflective surfaces as you can. Plosives. These are those, those sounds that your mouth makes um, you know, when, when saying certain syllables. Uh, probably the, the most notorious of them is the P popping. Uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Um, you, someone's iPod has their volume up to 11. They can blow their ears out. It's, not, it's very painful. To fix that, you can get this thing called a um, pop filter which is basically a piece of nylon uh, stretched across a plastic or metal frame. Um, I will now demonstrate. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Makes, it makes a world of difference. Um, they're not that expensive, maybe 10 or $20, but if you really want to, you can make your own. Um, basically get a coat hanger bedded into a roughly circular shape and stretch a nylon type material over it. And what better nylon type material than stockings? I don't know, have your girlfriend buy them, tell her you're cross-playing or something. Yes, and actually, uh, if you can get to a place like Michael's, uh, an embroidery hoop is wonderful for making one of these. There you go. More, more tips on recording good audio. You want to minim again, you want to minimize the, the number, amount of distracting noise. Record at night when everyone's asleep, when the kids are asleep. Um, Eliminate as much noise as you can, computer fans, um, uh, ch change or jewelry jangling around on your body, uh, heavy breathing, so Darth Vader would not make a very good podcaster. 
and you want to eliminate mouth tackiness. That's that sort of kind of lip smacking sound. Um, and that's really easy to do. You want to kind of rinse your mouth with lukewarm water, not hot, not cold, lukewarm. Um, also avoid drinking um, sugary beverages, milk, sodas, juices uh, before podcasting. Uh, avoid eating before podcasting. Do definitely do not eat during podcast while podcasting. I've yes, I have actually heard people munching away on their potato chips. It's very disgusting. And use lip balm. So let's get to it. Um, so here I am in Audacity. When you open it up, you'll see this kind of scary-looking blank window. But it's just not really that scary. It's as simple as just pressing the big red button. So, hey, this is Donald from Otaku No Podcast. Um, I'm here at Anime Expo, and we're doing my panel. And press, uh, press stop. Literally, it's as simple as that. You can play back, uh, you can play back here. Hey, this is Donald from Otaku No Podcast. Um, I'm here at Anime Expo. And literally, that's all there is to it. Um, I mean, seriously, that's literally all there is to it. Um, you can um, sharing the fun, though. You know, having co-hosts is great because they can kind of take over if your mind goes blank. <laughs> um, like I said before, there's several ways. There, there, there's you know more than one way to do it. The uh, classic method is multiple mics and a mixing board, which, but, you know, mixing boards have gotten a lot cheaper. You can get decent ones now for, you know, $150 or so. But, I mean, my God, look at all those knobs and dials. I mean, makes, it's enough to make my head spin. Um, I have found a really not too bad alternative is get a good omnidirectional microphone. Omnidirectional meaning picks up sound um, in you know, all directions. Um, sit that down, you know, get a group together, sit that down in the middle of your group, and assuming you're recording in a reasonably quiet room, like your hotel room at night, you can get actually fairly decent audio from that, and no, no, no need to deal with fuss over a mixing board and have your head explode with all those uh, dials and buttons. Now that's great for you know, having your co-host in the same physical location. What if you want to co-host with someone across the country or across the globe? Like I said before, Skype is your friend. Um, Skype is fantastic. It's available for both PC, Windows, and Mac. Um, and computer-to-computer -computer Skype calls are 100% free, whether you're across town from your host or across the globe. Yes, and there is a Skype for Linux. Oh, uh, yes, I forgot about that, yeah. Now, that's between computer-to-computer. Computer computer. Um, now, you may want to say, let's say you want to interview somebody. Maybe they don't have Skype set up on their computer, and you don't want to really you know, have them go through the trouble of installing it. You can actually bridge Skype with the uh, public telephone network, and there's two ways of doing that. Like I said before, the audio quality is not as good because you're dealing with uh, public telephone lines, which are not as good audio quality, but in most cases, it's, it's quite usable. So there's two ways of doing this. The first is Skype out, and that's where you, um, the host, dial out to any phone number. Um, and that's really inexpensive. It's uh, $2.95 a month, uh, unlimited calling to any, any number in the US or Canada. And if you're calling elsewhere, like say you want to interview someone in Japan, um, they have really, really, really competitive international rates. Your second option is called is Skype in. And that's where your Skype account has a number that other people can dial into. That's a bit, bit pricier. Um, it's $18 every three months. But the benefit to this is it comes with free voicemail. So it's an excellent way, say you want to have a call-in line, you know, where people can leave messages and you can play, play them on your show. This is an excellent way of doing it. It's not very good for interviews because then you're on their schedule, and you know what if you're interviewing someone in Japan, um, their uh, you know their noon time is like two in the morning for you or whatever. Not very good, but Skype in is great for um, for listener call in lines. Question. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> There's some um, Skype has excellent audio quality um, intrinsically, but there's some great, some way, easy ways of ensuring that you always get the best signal. Um, try to avoid Wi-Fi whenever possible. That's wireless networking. Sometimes you can avoid it, but if you can, use a hardwired Ethernet connection. Believe it or not, Wi-Fi introduces just enough lag sometimes to make your Skype call hiccup, which you can edit around, but you know, why, why increase your workload when you can easily plug in an Ethernet cable? Um, get a router with QoS or quality of service. A lot of the newer routers these days have this. Your, if your, your router may have it already, check your manual. Basically, it's a feature that lets you prioritize uh, certain kinds of traffic. So, for example, um, you can prioritize Skype traffic so that it gets, um, it has priority access to your bandwidth and um, and that way you won't have a Skype call hiccup. Um, try, don't download while you're Skyping, please. Even web browsing, uh, believe it or not, even web browsing can sometimes cause your Skype connection to hiccup. And for heaven's sake, please turn off the BitTorrent. We, we know, you know, you, you all know you do it, just turn it off. So let's actually get a Skype call going here and Supernode is a feature that Skype put in to try and improve quality, but in, many, in some cases it actually has the opposite effect. Um, this only affects the Windows version of Skype. The Mac and Linux versions don't support this, and it's really easy to turn off. There's a um, website that I have linked off of, of my page that gives, explains how to do it. So here we are in Skype. Um, I have I'm logged in as the wrong person. Let me, let me log in as me. Sweet, you're on. There we go. So, here, so Skype, you know, here's your um, Skype window. It's kind of like your, your instant messenger window. You have a list of all your contacts here. Um, and to, to call somebody, it's literally as simple as clicking on their name and pressing and pressing the green call button. But you can also start a conference call. This is one thing that Skype does really well: is you can have a conference call between multiple people. Um, so, like I've had. Uh, shows where I have three or four people along with me. We can have some great, awesome um, group discussions on various subjects. Yeah, I'm uh, also involved with another podcast called The Cartoon Geeks, and uh, our, our okay. two co-hosts are uh, uh, one's in, uh, in, in uh, Indiana and the other one's in Orlando, Florida, and we get together on a conference call, and uh, that's how we record. So when you start a conference call, you basically um, drag and drop people's names into um, where are you? There you are. There you are. So you can add Michelle in. Let's see if um, thank you. And none of my other none of my other friends are on at this hour, so this may be this may be just a single Skype call. So, actually, let me try Danny. He's probably is Danny here? No, he's not. So, in this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna try calling one of my other co-hosts at, at his home number. I don't know if he's he's there or not. Maybe he's on his way here. But hey, we'll try. What? So, just basically. Drag the people you want to call into, into the window here and click call. Hey, uh, hey. Hey. Hey, Danny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Say hi to Anime Expo. Uh, hi, Anime Expo. <laughs> hi, Danny. So, um, so, this, so we now have a Skype conference Hi, call Danny. going. Uh, 
So, are you encouraging me to listen to your panel? <laughs> Uh, well, I, say that. well, I just, well, all of my other co-hosts are, are, I couldn't find anyone else online. So to, simp so to start a recording, it's as simple as clicking the shiny red button. And now we're recording. Hello, hello. Uh, talk about whatever you want. Blah, 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 blah. How did you like the uh, masquerade last night? It was pretty cool. Um, so. Three words. Eden of the East. Actually, that's four words. Uh, it's awesome. That's oh, fantastic. Okay, so you've you've talked on for you know however long you want to make your show, um, and then just hit the stop button, and we're all done. Um, Danny, thank you so much. Um, Thanks, I'll Danny. We'll see you later. Yes, in workshop one. All right, catch you later. So to hang up, just press the red hang up button. And there you've recorded your Skype call. So now that you've done all your recording, it's time to edit, which is the phase I call making yourself sound less like an idiot. So let's listen to... So, so there's me s saying um and being, you know, scatterbrained. Um, to cut that out, it's literally as simple as taking your mouse, mouse cursor, highlighting, go up, to, go up to edit, and hit delete. Hey, this is Alan from the podcast. I'm here at my See, I sound much, much less scatterbrained now. It's magical. Um, so, let's, yes, question. Uh, how long does it usually take you to edit a podcast? You know, uh, it, different people have different editing styles. Um, some people do what's called edit points, where while they're actually recording and they, they, they find a point where they want to edit out, they'll actually write down the time code. Me, I'm, I'm kind of lazy, I don't do that. I usually just go back and listen to the whole, sh whole show and edit while I listen to it. So for me, it takes you know, however long the, the show lasted for. So you know, 30 minute show takes me roughly 30 minutes to edit. Um, if, you, if you're um, diligent enough to mark down edit points, you, your editing will go a lot faster. So let's um, bring in the Skype call that, I just, that we just recorded. Um, now to do that, you'll have to find where it's stored on your hard drive. Different um, Skype recorders store their f files in different places, so you'll have to consult your program's manual. In my case, for Skype Power Recorder, it's in a folder called Saved Files. So there we go. Um, so now let's see, we want to add this to our main file. So we can go to here and go to edit. Um, because this particular program records in, in stereo, we're available. In stereo, phonic sound. So you can just go up to edit and select all, then copy that. And we'll flip back to our original file. And you want to find the point where you want to insert the call. So let's see, we want to put it right there. Go up to edit and hit paste. It's literally that simple. I mean, this is this is not rocket science, people. It's it's really gotten a lot easier. It used to be not, not, you know, a lot more difficult, but now it's within the grasp of, of us mere mortals. Yes, it is. So, setting up your web host. Um, if you decide to go with a different service besides Podbean, um, presumably they'll have some sort of document that uh, 
a, a read a document that tells you how to set them up, or they'll have tech support or something. Um, I'm going to show the Podbean procedure. So basically, you go to podbean.com and click the little sign up link uh, upper right corner there. It'll ask you for some information. You want to be careful with the member name because that's the your URL of your that's going to be the URL of your show the you know HTTP colon slash slash blah 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 um, so pick something that makes sense to you I'm and finally you'll get an email once you're done registering you'll get an email with your temporary password and you just basically take that and sign in now they'll also send you a, a document. Uh, They'll also send you a link to a, a sort of getting started guide. Um, you, might wanna, you might wanna read that at your leisure. It's got some really good information in it. So you log into your site and you'll be taken to a settings page. Here you wanna set up some basic options, um, your show name, a show description. So you know, this podcast talks all, will talk all about um, Italia access powers, blah, 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 whatever. Um, this tab here uh, for iTunes, you'll want to fill out once you sub submit your podcast to iTunes. They'll give you some information um, that you'll need to add to this page. Commenting. Um, one thing that, I'm, that I can't stress enough is community is very important to podcasting. Your community is going to be your biggest asset, and you want to uh, foster that. Um, and one great way to do that is is commenting. The nice thing about Podbean is that it has um, a spam filter on it, so it, it'll get rid of uh, pretty much most, if not all, of the nasty spam comments. I found their filter to be pretty good. Um, and so you just want to basically set up here in this screen how you want to handle comments. Finally, it's time to publish. So the first thing we have to do is we have to export our audio file. And you'd want to use the Microsoft WAV format because that's the format that the levelator um, accepts. Remember we talked about that. So you can use um, iTunes to convert MP3 to WAV. So there's our file that um, that we just ex ex that says it. So there's our file. Now it's time to run it through the levelator. And to do that, it's literally as simple as I have way too many icons here. It's literally as simple as dragging it onto the levelator icon and watch as it does its magic. It's now going through the audio, smoothing out all the levels, making it happy. So now we're done with that. We have an output file. What I usually do is trash, get rid of the original file, and take out the word output because that's kind of lame. So. Now it's time to actually encode into an MP3. And again, um, this step will vary whether you're on Mac or Windows. I'm going to use the Mac program called Drop a Few My Way, which I talked about. And to do that, just literally drop it on. It'll ask you what format you want. We want MP3. And it'll ask you where you want to save your file. And it's as simple as that. So there's our episode 1.mp3 file. So so now we're on Podbean here. And you want to basically click the Publish Podcast link. Now this will take you to your dashboard, which is sort of like your central command center for your podcast website. Um, literally, now it's just as simple as clicking publish, and yay, the internet works. So here, here's your um, new post page. The first thing you want to do is write down some tags. 
So these are little you know, keywords to describe your show. So let's say you're talking about Hitalia. So you can type in Hitalia. Or, and let's say you're also talking about a the Anime Expo, Masquerade, etc., whatever. Now in the title, that's where you want to type in your episode title. You know, you can, you can be as creative or as generic as you'd like. And now in this big post box, that's where you type in your show notes. Um, basically, kind of a summary of what you guys talked about. And let's say you, you talked about some news articles or talked about some other links. You can put links to stuff you talked about. So you know you just type type whatever you whatever um, summary of what you talked about, and to make a link, you basically highlight it and click the little link button. So that's the uh, site that I talked about earlier. I hope you wrote that down. Yes, and so there's our link. So show notes are, are very important because you know that way um, people who are browsing the website can kind of get an idea of what the show is about. And also the real good uh, so that uh, uh, people can actually go to some of the sites that you talk about and uh, get a deeper idea of uh, what you're talking about. Exactly. Now we have to give it the, the uh, MP3 file we encoded, and that's done in this little podcasting box here. Click, click Browse and find your file. Like, like so. And click Publish. And watch the happy red progress meter go. Come on, internets, you can do it. And there you have it, your post, you're all done. So now if we go back to our website and reload it, there's our new episode. Show notes, there's a link. And the nice thing about Podbean is it has this nifty little player, so people who are just browsing your, your podcast website, they can play their file without, without having to install any special software. There you have it. Congratulations. You've you've published your first podcast. Like I said, really easy. Nowadays, you know, the technology is within your grasp. It's not rocket science. So, final thoughts, podcast your passion. Um, it's painfully obvious when you hear a podcast where the, the podcasters aren't into it. You know, it just sounds, yeah, we did this, we did that. No. Um, we want to hear your passion. Um, odds are we're here at an anime convention, anime is your passion, but on the one in the off chance that maybe you're more passionate about, I don't know, gardening or... Uh, cars, auto mechanic stuff, definitely podcast your passion. Community is key. Um, unfortunately, it's the hardest thing to attain. Um, com building a, a good community is extremely difficult. Um, and there are entire books written on the subject. Um, but definitely, um, you know, out outreach is good. Go on, you know, say, Anime Expo forums or... Um, you know, anime, anime news network forums, any anime forum, say you're, assuming your podcast is about anime, don't just spam. You know, don't say, hey, listen to my podcast. Instead, participate in other people's discussions and then just, you know, kind of on an off chance mention, by the way, I've got this podcast. Or better yet, you know, most forums have signature um, blocks. So put a little link to your podcast in your signature. Um, Twitter is great, Facebook uh, fan pages. Um, just there are tons of, of many ways out there to build community. Come, come speak at anime conventions like I'm doing. Um, eventually, you'll hit a critical mass, and your community will just will be there for you, and they will spread the word even further. 
So your community is your number one asset. Good audio is key. I cannot stress this highly enough. Um, and as I showed you, it's really not that expensive or really not that difficult to get good audio. Be mindful of time. Um, your typical commute is you know, 20 to 30 minutes in either direction. So multiples of that are great. So say you're, you make an hour-long show, um, you can listen, you know, people can listen to it, half of it on the way to, to work, the other half on the way home from work. Now, that doesn't mean you always have to have your show in multiples of 20 or 30 minutes. I mean, there certainly have been long, sh we've certainly had our share of long shows, but definitely try and keep that in mind you know, as, as an average. Be consistent. And I'll be the first to admit that I'm guilty of this. Um, people like consistency, um, even if it's like once a month or you know, once every two weeks. You don't have to have a weekly show. Just try and be consistent. Um, if you don't, people will start going, hey man, where's the show? Dedication, perseverance, stick with it. Um, there comes a point, there comes a point in every podcaster's life where they just, it just goes, Pff. it's called pod fading. It literally happens to everyone, but there will be that one thing that kind of drags you back into it. You know, maybe you'll get an email from someone saying, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. When are you going to put out your next show? Or maybe you'll see, run into someone at a convention that says, hey, I really like your show, man, where is it? Stick with it. You will be rewarded in, in the end. The sky is the limit. Um, mixing boards, there's the entire world of video podcasting, which I, which I haven't covered at all. The, uh, literally, you can, you, can, you can take it as, far, as high as you want to go. You, you, you can get a fancy uh, studio like Leo Laporte has. One great way to learn more is to go to conventions. Um, yes, there are other conventions besides Anime Expo. Um, Blog World New Media Expo is the big convention for bloggers and podcasters. I mean, all the A-list celebs are there. Leo Laporte, you know, all your, uh, your tech, tech crunch people, they're all there. Tons of great information, some awesome speakers. Um, that's held every year around October in Las Vegas. Um, wonderful convention, just packed full of information. But there's also what's called an unconference, which is a much more uh, informal gathering of people to share ideas. And those are called pod camps. And they're spread literally throughout the world. Um, so you want to go to pod camp, the pod camp website, you can find one near you. And again, all this stuff is linked off, will be linked off of my webpage. Spread the word. Even if you don't end up starting a podcast today, please tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your uh, coworkers about podcasts. Show them iTunes. You know, show them the podcast directory on iTunes. They're all completely free. You know, ask them what their interests are. Subscribe them to a few. Spread the word. We we need more listeners. You know. And finally, have fun. So where to go from here? Again, there's my website. Everything um, I, I showed you today will be linked up there, and I'll, I'll also add some more information, information that I literally could not fit. I mean, literally, I have like two plus hours of information that you know, I cannot uh, you know, go, go over. So, any questions? Well, the nice thing about services like Podbean is that they give you statistics. So you'll 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 know you'll see you know your your um, your um, number of listeners and your your monthly bandwidth increase as as you get more subscribers. Then you'll know you know you're you're reaching that threshold. It's time to upgrade. So it's it's really quite simple. Anyone else? Uh, you gentlemen with the top hat.
I'm sorry, what, uh, what was the, the question I'm having? He on? wants to, he, he was talking about people beta listening to the, the podcast before, uh, uh, before uh, putting it up on syndication. Um, I, I, I usually don't. Um, the, the nice thing about podcasts is it's your show. You can do what you want with it. I don't know, Michelle, you have any comments on that? Well, yeah, sometimes, you know, it's like uh, with uh, cartoon geeks, because of the fact that we're so separated by distance, uh, what Tom usually does, Tom Reed, my uh, uh, co-host, uh, is uh, he basically yeah. puts up the, uh, the, the podcast on a uh, password-protected part of our server, and uh, we, uh, the other participants listen to it beforehand, and uh, then they email him suggestions on tightening up and things like that. Any more questions? Uh, you gentlemen. How do you guys, I'm uh, sorry if you guys covered this already, but how do you handle having guests on the show and they're not in the same room as you? Skype. Skype. And, um, you know, it's, I usually like to send them at least a, kind of a, a rough outline of what, what, I'd like, what we're going to talk about. You know, ha that way they kind of are, are prepared and they don't, aren't totally scatterbrained. <laughs> yeah, um, having a podcast has a private wiki. And uh, oftentimes Donald will, sorry about that, uh, oftentimes Donald will, uh, will post uh, information on what we're going to cover. And uh, we look over the wiki, make our comments, and uh, that usually uh, allows us to come up with a pretty cohesive uh, uh, outline. More questions? Um, when usually when I get bad audio, it's when I'm actually with one of one of the people that I call out using the uh, public telephone network. And unfortunately, there's not that much you can do about that. Um, the best thing that I have found is I use sound soap that can at least make that audio tolerable. Um, you know, do do your best to get. Um, your co-hosts on the on on onto the computer Skype, um, you know, stress stress to them that it's really it's free to download, it's easy to set up. Um, Leo Laporte, when he has co-hosts, he actually sends them headsets, which are really cheap. You know, these are only like twenty dollars. He actually sends them a headset. That way, you know, he that way it's easy for them to get started, and you're guaranteed a pretty good uh, sound level. Any more questions? Doesn't matter. Um, the way MP3 encoding works is it uses something called joint stereo, which um, basically, for all intents and purposes, a joint stereo encoded file is roughly the same file size as a mono file. So you know, it's completely up to you. Um, any more questions?
He's a recording engineer. He knows what he's talking about. Any more questions? What? We're, all, we're all set? Well, now get out there and podcast. Absolutely. Go for it. And thank you so much for attending today. Cartoongeeks.com. Yeah, we haven't had one up lately, but we intend to real soon now. And I have-